when you read accounts like Abraham and Isaac, and isn't that something people bring up, especially people like atheists and others, they look at that account and they say, well, how could, how could God, how could a loving God tell you to sacrifice your son and you do it? And, and you know, what's that all about? Well, that's just it, right? They're really not usually familiar with the account to know what it's about or to know that culturally and historically, sacrifices in those times were done by uh, various religions and groups. And while Abraham himself may not have done it, it wasn't something he would have been unfamiliar with. So when Jah approached him to see if he would do this, well, why? What's the point? If We know Jah didn't have him kill his son. So why put that on someone, right? Why have them go through the, the process of, of acting like they're going to do it? Because he needed that trait to be in the line of humankind that he was going to use to bring forth his son to show how we were supposed to act from the start. And that is by listening to Jah and not following our own desires. So what do you hear from Jesus over and over again? I come not to do my own will, but the will of the Father. What I teach is not mine. Um, I didn't come of my own initiative. So he's do where Adam and Eve chose on their own what to do. Jesus chose to listen to the Father and do what he said to do all the way to death without failing. But his humanity was still humanity. And so like you saw him when he was being killed, cry out to the Father, why have you forsaken me? Right? Any person going through torture and pain is not going to feel like that's the time when God's looking out for him. And that's the moment he needed to have that trait of obedience in him to do what his father said, even though it was painful, even though it didn't seem right in some sense because of the pain he was going through. He didn't do anything deserving of it. Isaac didn't deserve to be sacrificed. Right? I mean, we don't know him well, but Jah didn't let it happen. So again, why have him go through the motion? Because the motion brought about the trait he needed in his son's body in those weak moments at the end when all seemed lost and that would keep him obedient in spite of the pain and suffering that he endured. Um, so we connect all these things. It's just, it's exactly what the writer of Hebrews uh, tells the Jewish Christians of the first century that he quotes the Psalms and says that Job prepared a body for me. He's talking about the Messiah. Well, that's what he's talking about. He, we have two records of Jesus' lineage in the Bible, showing his lineage through David and all the way back to Adam. There are no records like that anymore that people could use to try to identify the lineage of a Messiah. The temple is gone. Well, I mean, parts of the walls there and they have remnants, but it's not a a temple to Jah where they're offering sacrifices in fulfillment of the law. Nobody is, not that I'm aware of. So when we read in Moses about the prophet who would come and who would speak like he speaks and in Jah's name, and when we read about Isaiah chapter 53, the servant who would come and suffer for the, on behalf of many, Isaiah 11 speaks of the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, Micah refers to the one whose origin is from long ago. We have Malachi who speaks of the messenger of the covenant and the Lord who would come. All throughout the Hebrew scriptures before Jesus was even born, we have references to the one who would come in fulfillment of the law of Moses and who would be the seed that Adam, uh, that Jah told Adam, Eve, and, and Satan would crush uh, the devil and everything that happened from that time forward and bring an end to it. That's what we read about in Jesus. He says that's what he came to do. All of these things connect over a long period of time. We can identify with the history of these groups. So these accounts, when put in their proper context, all make sense. Uh, but we don't expect everyone to start out believing in the Bible and to accept it uh, 100%. Um, that's not the way it works. The Bible is a collection of books. In our view, it's the collection of the best books having to do with the history of Jah and the people of Jah on the earth that he used to bring about these various conditions 
and through which he formed the nation of Israel, and then through which he brought the Messiah that fulfilled the law of Moses before the Romans destroyed the temple in 70 AD. And so from that time forward, we've been under the system of forgiveness that Jesus set forward, where if we have faith, and that's not blind faith, that's belief based on good reasons, like we've been talking about, we can be forgiven for the mistakes we make 